Hey devs, welcome to the new video. In this video I will talk about some mistakes that some of the beginners on Unreal Engine developers often make, so if you're ready, let's dive into it. Before starting the video, I want to tell those are just my observations and my ideas, so there is no single truth about anything. I need to tell you this before because sometimes people watch the video and writing an essay on the comments. I just want to tell you that in the beginning. So most of you guys are developers like me but also gamers, right? We are making games because we like to play games. When you play a game, especially if it is made by any indie dev, you can recognize there is something wrong about performance or something on the screen doesn't feel natural. It happens even in AAA games too. Or maybe you can clearly understand some of the assets not fitting each other smoothly because they got from different packs or different websites and stuff. By the way, if you need a good plugin, you can check out my day and night plugin from, for Unreal in the description and you can download it for free. Sometimes it happens because they don't know how to fix it, or maybe they don't see the problem in their computer with their specs. So I just made a list of some problems I saw in Unreal Engine developers' videos and some of their games that I downloaded from Ichaya and stuff and I want to talk about. The first one is from Environment Design. Unreal is a so powerful game engine and new devs wanted to make their games look super realistic. But while doing that, they don't use some easy optimization workflows. One of the biggest ones I saw a lot in the new Unreal Engine games is they don't care about poly counts on the little meshes like foliage, like little props or just objects that are so far from the player. Let's go simple. There's tons of grass in the terrain, right? If it is an open world or something like that. So that means you need to use lightweight meshes for those foliages in the scene. If you use default quicksill foliage in your scene, of course it will kill your performance. Because those meshes are mostly 3D scanned, so high detail meshes and you don't need to use their default way in your game. I cannot say a specific number but one foliage actor shouldn't have 10,000 or 5,000 polygons. Wine systems also looking so good but uh, they are so performance consuming if you cannot handle them right. It is the same if the object is so small something like a fork in the table or something little rocks in the ground etc. If a player cannot see them closely, or is it so far, uh, it is, doesn't matter, just make it lightweight, low poly as much as possible. Or you can just uh, export them as a high poly, then you can make your textures, then you can use high poly meshes instead of high poly in the game scene. There are also some basic optimization ways that all of the games uses like culling systems and LEDs. They are so useful for optimization. Sometimes devs do not want to handle different LED meshes or manually adjust the calling distances for different meshes. It might seem a bit tricky at first, but I think all devs should use those techniques no matter their game sizes. One of the problems I saw, especially in indie Unreal Engine games, that they use default quality systems in their settings, which I never recommend. I think those quality settings are made for the editor, like mostly, and they're so sharp for the in-game settings. Instead of using Unreal's quality settings, you can create by yourself. Also, it is not that hard. For example, you can use some data tables for settings, or you can create a function that it just uh, handles different console commands about any kind of graphic related, and you can adjust your quality settings, and you can make your own custom quality settings for your game. I also want to mention UI problems in general. When I see a game, doesn't matter if it is made with Unity or Unreal. I can understand those UI elements are default engine elements and they are not customized for the games. Maybe it is different for you and I'm just an annoying gamer, but when I saw those default UI elements, all my hope was just gone for the game because I felt like the game wasn't that polished or it is not a good game at all. You don't have to be a great graphic or UI designer, but you can make simple but different UI elements with GIMP, Photoshop or whatever graphics uh, thing you use. You even don't need to create great graphics from scratch, just check the games you like and observe their UI elements 
change and adapt to your game and use it with that way maybe. It is not the best solution, but it is better than using the default UI elements in the engine. One of the other things I want to mention is the high resolution textures. If you downloaded something from Quixel, those 3D scanner meshes not only have high density poly counts, but also so big texture. If your game has a lot of different meshes in the scene, maybe you are using more than a thousand meshes in the scene, you should optimize your texture somehow. Those texture sizes increase the size of the game too. Maybe you already know, but the game size is also a big deal for the players. They don't want to download a 60GB in the game and they haven't figured out is it a good game or bad. Uh, for example, I'm using Nvidia's Texture Tools. I will drop a link in the description so you can check it out too. The last thing about graphics I want to say is that most of the Unreal devs don't know which features they use in the project. I'm not saying everyone and I'm not judging anyone because Unreal is so much bigger that one person can handle most of the time, even me. So maybe you haven't figured out yet. For example, have you ever checked what is texture streaming and how it is works? What are virtual textures or virtual shadow maps? You need to understand what they are so you can turn off or turn on in your game and you can use them with the proper way. There are some other cases like do not use over complex collisions, it is not good for rank instant stuff or don't make everything movable. You probably already know those. It's okay, you cannot learn everything, but it doesn't mean you're a good or bad developer. Instead of doing something with the engine, just check it out. Read the blogs, read the documentation about what this game engine offers and which features do you want, why they're defaultly open. I always thought having a general idea about how 3D technologies work is a big plus for development, so you can use those disciplines and technologies in different kind of projects. I will leave some links from Unreal documentation in the description, you can check it out. In the last part, I want to mention that I'm not a professional too. I'm not a great coder or math genius or stuff, but I'm trying to learn some stuff about OOP in general and how can I write better code with Blueprint or sometimes C++ if needed. Tim said Verse is a feature of Unreal, so it is good for people like me who don't like high level programming so much such as C++. As far as I know, there is some problematic stuff about coding in general. For example, casting. Casting is an expensive function to use because you call that actor whenever you cast it. There are some cool Unreal features you can use for better programming pipelines such as interfaces, data tables, functions, components, and more. Some of them might be not so impactful for the optimization, but it is good to keep on track without not lost inside of blueprint codes. Especially different ways of communicating between blueprint is a complex case if you dig and dig more. But I think everyone can follow the basic principles of clean coding when they're making their game. Using for loops and unnecessary variables inside of two actors, uh, maybe they're not so huge cases for performance like lightning, objects and other stuff, but they are still useful. There are also other topics outside of the Unreal Engine like DirectX, DLSS or Fidelity FX, support and more for better performance. You can use all of them in Unreal. By the way, I will make a video about how you can import those. So if you want to see them first, you can subscribe to the channel and like the video. This video was all about my little observations. I'm not a game developer veteran or something. So I just mentioned some things that I regularly saw in the other videos. Until the next video, see you all. I hope you all doing great works.